So hi and welcome back to my Power BI basic series. In this video I'm going to be covering some basic DAX measures, covering the different count, sum, average, min and max so you can get these results quickly and easily. So without further ado, let's head over to Power BI Desktop. So if you want to follow along by doing it from scratch, the data set is below. But then if you want to be able to see the final result in the Power BI desktop version, again, in the description below is a link to the file. So the first part I'm going to be covering is count. Now at the top here, you can see that I already have set out the number of rows that exists in the data set. So if we go into the data set here and then click down, we can see there's 52,570 rows and we can see there are 52,570 rows and then how they're split between the different continents. And then we're going to do a distinct count of the locations. So then you can get the count of unique locations for each continent, the sum of all new cases, the average of new cases, which will be by every date new cases were provided. And then the min new cases, in each continent and then the max new cases in each continent for the days when they were provided. So first, what we're going to do is start with count rows, which will then give you the same number here. So all you'd need to do is click on the table that you want, and then you can either add a new measure up here, or as I always like to do, just to ensure that I've actually selected the correct table is to click on the three little dots on the side and select new measure. And then once the measure formula pops up, then you can start typing in your measure. And in this case, we are going to do count rows. So let's do count rows as the title. So you type in what you're going to actually call your measure and then do the equal sign. And then this is where you start to type in the DAX, which is count rows. And as we can see, it's down here. Luckily, when you start typing, they start to pop up. So if we select count rows and what the count rows does is allows you to select the table you're going to be counting because it's just going to be counting the full table number of rows. So as we're using this data set, we then select that one and then do close bracket and then press return. And then we can just drag and drop and then it's in there, but also you can drop into here as well. So if I show you, you can drag drop there. If you wanted to sort of set where you wanted it to kind of sit within the columns, but if you're just wanting it just to go into the next one on the end of the next, you can just drag and drop into the main table. So as we can see, it's exactly the same number here. Now you can get the same number again by doing count. So if we create another measure and then did count and then select count and so as we are looking at, say, the continent with the number of locations, if we select location, close bracket, press return, and again, just drag and drop, you'll have the same number. Now, the reason why you have the same number is if we go back to the data set and look at locations, we don't have any null fields. But if you notice over here under these two columns, we have null or blank spaces for in the rows. So if we were then to select hospital patients instead of location, we'll get a different result. And there we go. And so this is why it's important to understand whatever you're using and whatever logic you need to complete, it's best to kind of work out, okay, I want to count all the rows. It's best to do count rows. But if you wanted to count how many rows have data in them or some form of non blanks in them, then that's when you want to use count. Now, if we remove that one for now, and then if we move over to do distinct count for the number of locations. So if we start typing out distinct count. And then for distinct count, you want to select which table you want, which is this one and then also where you want the unique values to show. So obviously distinct count allows you to then be able to say, okay, if you had 10 rows that said UK, it would come back and just say one. 
for those 10 rows because it's got UK. But say if you've got France with five and then UK with five, that's 10 rows. But under Europe, it would show as two because there's two different countries, even though they're under 10 rows. So if we select location as our one and then do close bracket. And then we drag that in. Then we can see we've got the same as we've got there. If I just bring these columns in a bit, we can see we got the same number. So now we've done that, let's move over to sum. And we're going to do sum of new cases. And here you type sum. And then we select new cases, which is there. Press tab, close bracket, and press return. And if we drag and drop, we can then see we've got the same number. As you can see, we don't have the comma spacing. So to add that in, we can just go up to the format pane here and click on that comma. And there you go. Now you've got the same format and you can see the same numbers. So as you can guess, as we go along, I'm now going to do average. So if we type in average of new cases and then type average, there we go. And then we find new cases again, and then we press tab, close bracket. So if I drop this in, so that's how you get your average. And then for min, the same process. We just type in what we're going to call it, which is going to be min new cases, and then min select new cases, which is there, close bracket. And then we've got our min new cases. Again, let's format it. There you go, all matches up to what we've got up here. So with the max new cases, what I'm going to show you is what you can do if you by mistake create it in a different table. Now this table will connect anyway because I already have the connection built in here. And then what I can do is add in new measure and type in what we're going to call it, which is max new cases. Let's change that to a lowercase. There we go. And then max. And then we want to find new cases. And because we've now got this in a different thing, it's only got lots of different ones. There we go. And then if we close bracket, save it, drop it in, you still get the same result because it's still connecting to the table which is here. So even though we're in a different table here, we put the table there. But say you did that and you're like, oh no, I've now got to move all these ones you didn't realize and everything like that. Really easy to move. All you have to do is click on it. And then up here is home table. And then you can click on there and then go which one you want. And then it moves it into there. So then suddenly you have all your different measures all in one place. Now, if we format that so it matches up, it looks all good. Yep. And there we go. All matches up. So as you can see, creating simple measures like this is as easy as when you do it in Excel. The power comes is when you start connecting different measures together or building out filter context using the calculate function, which I'll be covering in another video. But this was just there. So then you can get comfortable, understand how to get those calculations, account, sum, average, min and max. And then one extra bonus tip I'm going to add into this. When you start creating a lot of measures, you'll find that because these are all how they're named, they get dotted around and you, it can be kind of messy, especially if you've got like a large, large table. Now there's two ways you can create a way to house your measures. So they sit in one folder. You can create a table that kind of sits with its separate measures in there, but that's okay if you're kind of dealing with one sort of data set that allows you to not get too bogged down with lots of different measures. And when you start making adjustments, you don't always know where the measures are pointing because if you're saving this in a separate folder, you don't know what table it originally came from until you start looking at it and looking at the backing detail, where actually the best practice is to then go up to your modeling. And then within here, you see this option called display folder. And within your table, you can highlight by selecting control and clicking on all your measures like so. So once you have all your measures, you can then create a folder. So if we say call it measures and press return, you now have all your measures in one folder 
which you can then move all the way there. But again, it puts it all into alphabetical. So what you can do is just add something at the beginning, be it like a full stop, an underscore, a hyphen, anything like that will then push your measures to the top. And obviously you don't have to call them measures. You could have multiple ones. But then also, if you wanted to, you can create within your measures additional folders. So if we create a subfolder in measures for just count, you've then got your count measures. And that was the right way I needed to do it. <laughs> I knew something didn't look right there, and that's why. To yes, <laughs> select the correct slash to be able to get this to work. And there you go. You now have different ones under here. And say if you've added those and you go, oh, I wanted that one in there. You can type it in, or once you've done the folder, you can start just drag and dropping. So if you create a new measure, you can just drag them in and from here, but always do it from the modeling view because it makes it a lot easier. So another easy way to batch creating folders for your measures is by using the tabular editor, but I'll leave the tabular editor to a later date because that's a bit more advanced because you want to use those for creating calculation groups. And first I want to be able to just show how to get used to using measures in the first place. And then we can get on to the real fancy stuff of what you can do with calculation groups and the power of tabular editor. So thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and please like, share and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything in the comments below that you want me to cover at a later date. And as always, until next time.